I've often said that I wished people could realize all their dreams and wealth and fame and so that they could see that it's not where you're going to find your sense of completion. Like many of you, I was concerned about going out into the world and doing something bigger than myself until someone smarter than myself made me realize that there is nothing bigger than myself. Because life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Unless you were around in the 1990s, it's hard to explain just how Jim Carrey exploded onto the scene. Ace Ventura, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber were all released in the same freaking year. No way! After a decade of toiling away, trying to catch his big break, Carrey didn't just walk in the door, he crashed right through it. Seemingly overnight, he became the hottest star in Hollywood, releasing hit after hit. I was struggling to find the right words to explain why audiences loved him so much. Then I watched The Dreamer by Dave Chappelle, who articulated it perfectly. Jim Carrey is talented in a way that you can't practice or rehearse. But behind the madcap surface, there lies an enigma. Multiple failed marriages, bouts of depression, mystical beliefs, on-again, off-again retirement. From growing up in near poverty, to becoming the first ever actor to command a $20 million fee for a movie, his life and career has hardly been plain sailing. I think it's telling that his two Golden Globes are for playing roles where the nature of the character's reality is brought into question. What is real? Is Truman real? Is Andy real? Is Jim real? The great comedians are those that truly know how to express themselves and are able to take audiences on their journey. And during the 1980s, Jim practiced his craft on the stand-up circuit as an impressionist and improv comedian, eventually leading to a successful appearance on The Tonight Show. Uh, see if you recognize this. It's my impression of Wiley Coyote walking away from a bad fall. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is very revealing, as rather than tell the usual jokes about his family and love life, Jim put on masks after mask, after mask. It was at this point I realized the strange parallel Jim has with another beloved and all-time great comedian, Robin Williams. We made a mistake. We're happy to be in America. Don't ask for a green card. <laughs> Look at me right now, money penny. Want to do that bow and get to know you. He also started his career as a high-energy improv comedian with a stuttering film career until his own breakthrough in And much like Jim Carrey and Ace Ventura, these roles finally gave both actors the creative freedom needed to showcase to Hollywood and to the world just what they're made of. The more I thought about it, the more I realized how much Jim and Robin had in common. We have the previously mentioned stand-up act, the early film career, an eventual breakthrough, after which they suddenly became huge box office stars, showcased a talent for improvising on set, received critical acclaim in both comedic and dramatic roles, and both sadly had multiple failed marriages and suffered from mental health issues. And they were both actually offered the role of the Riddler in Batman Forever. Though rather cruelly, Robin was only being used by the studio as a bargaining chip to make sure first choice Jim Carrey accepted the role. He still knocked it out of the park though. One interesting characteristic of Jim Carrey is that he is a self-professed believer in the law of attraction, which is a spiritual belief that positive or negative thoughts bring positive or negative life experiences. So didn't you write yourself a check? I heard yeah. that you did. Is that true? I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years, or three years maybe, and, uh, and uh, I dated at Thanksgiving 1995. And I put it in my wallet and I kept it there and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff. And, uh, and, uh, but then just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was going to make $10 million on, I think it was Dumb and Dumber. Maybe. Dumb and Dumber, yeah. yeah. And the opening words at the beginning of this video, that was from an acceptance speech at the Maharishi International University in Iowa which practices a consciousness-based education system that includes transcendental meditation. Don't get me wrong, 
I'm not criticizing him in any way for his beliefs. I think fame and the Hollywood system can be extremely toxic, and everyone tries to find their own way of coping. But for Jim, there is method to the madness. Okay, we've covered enough of the strange side of Jim Carrey. It's time to focus on the genius. Throw it! I dare you! Comedians don't nearly get enough credit, because much like dramatic actors, they too are capable of transforming and absorbing themselves into a role, but for some reason critics treat comedy as a lower form of art. So, I want to compare three of his most famous roles. Ace Ventura, Liar Liar, and Man on the Moon. Ace Ventura is where Jim really went all out and cartoonish as possible. He came up with the signature hairstyle himself, which really encapsulates this buffoon trying to be macho. The idea of a pet detective is ludicrous in itself, so Jim made Ace ludicrous in character, like giving him a unique walk, facial tics, and his own way of pronouncing words. He squeezed as much possible out of a line of dialogue, using his whole body and face into creating a punchline whenever the script was lacking. Can you really imagine this role played by anyone else? For Liar Liar, Jim received a Golden Globe nomination. This time he wasn't just acting like a live-action cartoon, and he didn't need a funny voice or ridiculous haircut and wardrobe. He could walk the fine line of being an everyman, yet also showcase a talent for physical comedy. You can never say he's not giving 100%. And perhaps Jim's most controversial role was as his hero Andy Kaufman in Man on the Moon, for which there is a whole Netflix documentary about how utterly consumed Jim became. This method acting approach earned Jim his second consecutive Golden Glow. And if you're a big and Andy Kaufman fan as I am, you'll equally be as impressed at how Jim captured his naivety, vulnerability, and unique charisma. So forget all the YouTube biographies, motivational videos, and tragic life stories about Jim Carrey. Mm, that sounds good. If you want to understand who he is, and how the mind of this strange genius works, just watch him in action. In case I don't see ya, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.